Good day, students. Today, we are going to look at language region of Africa, which is going to be our session four for SOC 103, which is African people and society. What do we want to look? We are going to look at the language region, how languages are being grouped into one language family within the African continent. But first of all, let me tell you what this course and this topic is all about. We are going to look at the social cultural setting of Africa. Now, man is born as a social animal. Man cannot live in isolation. It's bound to live in the mix of its people. And in that course, they have to communicate because communication is very vital for the survival of an individual. And for communication to take place, language or a means of communication will be part and parcel of what can be used to interact either through gesture or the use of language. And that is what we are trying to look at today. Quickly, let's look at the introduction of what language is. Language is an important aspect of culture. Yes, because earlier on in the first lecture in my introductory lesson, I told you that culture is a total way of life of the people. For you to know more of your culture, you have to communicate. And the means of communication is via language because language is an aspect of culture. It is a system of symbols that allow communication between people. Yes, through language, you can make use of gesture or symbol. But for as long as you are passing an information and the other persons will understand what you mean, then communication is taking place via the use of language. Language makes possible the formation of culture and membership in the society. Yes, it is through communication via the use of language that we can be able to understand what we are and to make a good relationship and interaction with one another. It serves the continuity, it's, it ensures the continuity of culture and it serves as a vehicle through which culture is transmitted from one generation to another. It is through language that we, or I, as I speak to you, was able, or it's able to learn what I have learned today that I can stay in presence of you to communicate. Yes, and the means of communication through is via language, which is English. If I don't have this capacity or if I didn't learn this, I cannot be able to stand in front of you to pass this information. And if you can understand what I'm saying, it means that learning is taking place through the use of language. It is therefore handy in the classification of culture. Language is very important because we cannot talk about language without looking at culture. Now, let's look at language group in Africa. Most African languages belong to one or one of five language family. The language groups in Africa belong to either one of the five language grouping. One of it is the Afro-Asiatic language. The second one is the Nilo-Saharan language. The third one is the Niger Congo language. And the Niger Congo is divided into Niger Congo A and Niger Congo B. The next one is the Khoisan, the Khoisan language. And the fifth one is the Austronesian or Indo-European language. This last one I will explain further when we get to the badge. Now let's look at the linguistic ancestry. Note that the concept of linguistic ancestry is not as clear as the biological ancestry. Why? Because it is very difficult for us to get in totality the origin of language. But the origin of man was a bit clear based on how it was explained in the books. But that of linguistic ancestry turned out to be a bit difficult. Now, look at the map. This is the language group map of Africa. Each and every language group is being designed according to a particular group so that you cannot get yourself 
confused. You can see there is a pink, there is yellow, there is blue, there is green. All these represent a particular language. Now, let's start with the Afro-Asiatic language family, which is the first language group. We are going to look at this based on certain characteristics and the people and where it is being spoken in Africa. It is, it is spoken in large parts of North Africa, East Africa, Southwest Asia. This language family is being spoken largely in this part of Africa where I have mentioned. Note, not only that it is being spoken in this place only but there are other places but where you can find where it is dominated with this particular language family is this three that i have mentioned the north africa the east africa and the southwest asia you can see southwest asia it means this language is not only found within africa but it has extend to even asia those that are having boundaries with africa the Afro-Asiatic language family comprises of almost 350 languages, approximately. And it is subdivided into four. We have the Semitic language, we have the Cushintic language, we have the Babas and the Chadic. It is out of this four, it is only the Semitic that is found outside of Africa. Example. This one that we saw, Southwest Asia, they speak Semitic. And Semitic is one of the first subgroup of the Afro-Asiatic language family. Now, let's look where most widely spoken Afro-Asiatic language include the Semitic is Arabic. They speak Arabic. They also speak Amharic. The Oromo are mostly... Kushintik, and Hausa is Chadic. Based on what I have mentioned earlier, I told you that it is not only found in those three. There are other parts of Africa that are found speaking this language. It's just that it is dominated with the first three that I have mentioned. So Hausa is found in Africa, part with Nigeria. We can see it around Niger. Mali and the rest. These are West African countries that speak Hausa, but I did not add it up to the parts of it which I have first mentioned, which are the three, because it is not dominated like the first three. Now, let's quickly look at the second one. The Nilo-Saharan language group. The Nilo-Saharan language are a group of African languages spoken mainly in the upper part of Cherry and Nile River, which is presently known as the Nubia. This language family is more, is more and highly internally diverse than the Niger Congo. It means that the Nilo Saharan is more diverse compared to the next one that we are going to talk about, which is the Niger Congo. But even for the fact that the Niger Congo has the largest coverage, it is not as diverse, internally diverse as the Nilo Saharan. So, and they mainly include the Sudan, the Ethiopia, the Uganda, the Kenya, and the Northern Tanzania. These are the countries mostly that speaks the Nilo Saharan language. And examples of this language are here. One, Lao. Two, Acholi. Three, Lango. They are very funny languages because from their pronunciation, they are very funny. But these are languages that people speak. In fact, you can even see that the Kanuri that is found in Nigeria also belongs to the Nilo-Saharan language family. Let's look at the next one is the Niger Congo language group. And I told you that the Niger Congo is subdivided into two, which is the Niger Congo A and the Niger Congo B. Now, we said the Niger Congo language family has the largest geographical coverage, number of speakers, and number of distinct languages. And this language family is mostly found 
in West Africa. Most of the people in West Africa belong under the Niger Congo language family. The Niger Congo, examples of the languages within the Niger Congo, we have the Bantu, we have the Swahili, we have the Zulu, we have the Yorubas, we have the Igbos, we have the Edwite and the Platoid, all spoken in Nigeria. And even for the fact that the Zulu are found around the South African side, the Swahili are not here within us, within West Africa, but most of the people in the Sub-Saharan Africa fall under the Niger-Congo area. Also, they are tonal. They are mostly tonal. The next one is the Khoisan language. Now let's look at the Khoisan language are found mainly in Southwest Africa. Example, we have the Namibia, the Botswana, and the Angola. These are places where you find the Khoisan language. They also, the two distinct languages usually considered as Khoisan are the Sandawe and the Hazza of Tanzania. These people speak the Khoisan. And this is the major language, the Sandawe and the Hazza of Tanzania. The next one is the non-African language group, which is the Indo-European or the Australasian language. When we say, why many languages groups are indigenous to Africa, several others belong to non-African families. This was as a result of the contact with the Westerners. We tend to have a different language other than the one that we speak. In Nigeria, we speak Pidgin English, which is called Creole language. And I also get to understand that not only in Nigeria that they speak Pidgin English, they even speak in Brazil. You understand? There is also another language, which is a Creole language. They call it African. But I hardly don't know if they speak that in South Africa or where. They call it African. It's a Creole language also. There are also other Indo-European that was used before now. Like the old Persian and Greek used in Egypt in the early days. We have the Latin in North Africa and the modern Persian. These were those ones that were used around the Indian Ocean. So in conclusion, there are lots of controversies among scholars as regards the language grouping. Before I went further to speak, I made it clear to you that language ancestry is very difficult with biological, and uh, it's not as clearly explained as biological ancestry because you can see that they said there are still controversies according to scholar regarding language ancestry. However, grouping this, there might be some kind of change when it comes to the grouping of language family. But this one was based on that that was being documented by Greenback's work on African language published in 1963. Thank you so much for your understanding. Read and get a better understanding. There will be a forum where we are going to discuss it one on one. If you have any question, you can ask me. I am going to stop for this class. Next, we are going to continue with session five. Thank you so much.